About 3.30 this morning, I woke up with an absolutely spectacular football analogy for what is going on on the political scene right now. It's a take that I haven't heard any of the political pundits make, but it is truly the exact right example, and I could not wait today to get this video up and share it with you. Once I show you this, you guys are going to absolutely be floored and go, wow, this is perfect. This is what everybody needs to be talking about right now. Real quick though, before we get into it, it's a battlefield of the mind. You've really got to be a thinker to be able to pull all of these pieces apart and look at them critically and then put them back together in a way that makes real sense. Way too many people on both sides right now are getting caught up in something that is entirely irrelevant regarding the last debate, this thing they're calling a disaster, a debacle for the Democrat Party. It's actually a huge advantage for them. And it is disappointing to see Mr. Trump actually playing right into their hands. I hope perhaps somebody gets this video to him so that he can see what's really going on. If you'd like to take advantage of Battlefield of the Mind videos that really can't be shown on YouTube because they have a vested interest in you not being a thinking person, join us over at the Patreon channel where it's only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. That's right, you heard it right, a dollar, one single dollar per month, and less than a dollar a month if you sign up for an entire year. And best of all, Take three months, peruse the hundreds of videos that are over there. If it's not for you, if it's just too much truth, within 90 days, you can get a full refund of all $3 you would have pledged. No questions asked. Love to have you over there. Now, without any further delay, and God bless all of you who are already over there, by the way, thank you so, so much. I never want to be remiss in saying thank you. Now, I brought this up just as an example. Think of a football game that is really hyped up. It's two teams that perennially, every year, tough game, they fight it out, and you're signed up, you get tickets, and you go, and it's an absolute blowout on one side. Absolutely not even a close game. After the first quarter, quarter and a half, you are bored to tears. One team absolutely destroys the other. In this particular case, I'm using the Texas and Oklahoma example, where Texas clobbered Oklahoma 49 to nothing. After the game, of course, there's the press conferences that they do to try to explain what happened. And the Oklahoma coach comes out and says, well, you know, my uh, offensive coordinator's wife had just left him, and we had a whole bunch of players that weren't doing good in school, and they'd spent a lot of time uh, studying and really weren't focused on the game. And we really didn't play our, our best game at all. In fact, it was probably the, you know, the worst game. Um, we'd had inter-squad scrimmages that were better than this. And uh, I just can't really say anything more than that other than it's not endemic of our program or how good of a team we are. I'm sure we've all heard something like this. Now, imagine then if... The coach of Texas, who just won the game, 49 to nothing, came out and said, well, I heard the press conference from the Oklahoma coach, and, you know, I agree. It really wasn't their best game. It wasn't their best game at all. But we still think, we still think at Texas that even if Oklahoma had played their best game ever, we're still a better team. We could still beat them, and we don't want... Anyone to think that, well, the only reason Texas won is because Oklahoma had a bad night. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a big, giant do-over. We're going to call it a do-over. And we're going to uh, let Oklahoma get everything squared away. And we're going to wait. We're going we're to wipe this win off the board. We're going to make sure that it just doesn't count. Nobody thinks about it. And we're going to play the game over again when Oklahoma is playing its best football so that when we beat them then, we can say, yeah, see, we beat you at your best. So 
That's what we're going to do. We don't want to win against a team that wasn't on top of its game. Now, the Texas coach should be fired for doing anything like that, right? That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? You see, in football, much like in the military, they teach you that when you're going up against an enemy, adversary, an opponent, you have to be better on your worst day than your opponent is on their best day. See, the excuses don't matter. And if you go out and clobber somebody, absolutely destroy them, you say, well, guess what? That was their moment. They had a chance to get out there on the same gridiron as we did and put their best effort forward, and they flopped. We beat them. Doesn't matter what their excuses are. We're not redoing the game. We are 1-0. and Now, riddle me this. Why in the hell would Donald Trump want another debate with Joe Biden? He just clobbered him. Think of Donald Trump as the Texas coach who just won 49 to nothing, and Joe Biden as the Oklahoma coach who just got absolutely smoked. Why would you want another? Look at this quote from President Trump. I have the answer to correct Joe Biden. Let's do another debate. Why would you want another game? But this time, no holds barred. And all on discussion, just the two of us on stage talking about the future of the country. Why give the guy a second chance? Why give him a second chance? He had his chance. That was his opponent. You see, this is a little bit of narcissism coming from Trump. He hates this idea that people are saying, well, it's because Biden's age and he has this dementia. Trump's still ain't really not that great. It's because Joe Biden was so bad. He hates that. You see, he can't just take the win, regardless of how you got the win. Think I'm kidding about this? Here's Rob Finnerty from Wake Up America on Newsmax. This is not about Joe Biden's age. It's about his brain, and there is a difference. Baloney. It is neither about his age, nor about his brain, nor about the debate. It's about two competing ideas of thought for governing the country going forward. The conservative idea or the progressive liberal one. Making this about Joe Biden helps the Democrats. Because none of the, the topics matter. Well, we, the, because the Democrats can say, well, we really are right about abortion. But Joe Biden, because of his age and uh, mental state, couldn't really articulate it well. And just insert the word economy, immigration, all this, about all of it. And it gives them the free pass. It gives them the out to say, boy, boy if we replace him, if we replace him, boy, that's a Trump better. We're going to go fix his little red wagon. And believe me, believe me, Trump should be thinking about this critically. You just won 49 to nothing. Take your 1-0 and and go on to the next game. This idea of bringing somebody younger, more articulate, or, or pardon me, articulate in to elucidate their ideas is not a good strategy. Just because you think you can beat anybody doesn't mean you can. Maybe Oklahoma has a bet. Maybe there is some truth to what the Oklahoma coach said. And they show up and your guys don't. Especially on that second game. Anybody who's ever played football knows the, knows the truth. When two teams play twice in a year, they almost always split. They almost always split. Even if the first time, the team that won, won by a lot. Because the other team relaxes now. Pete Buttigieg, and this is what happens when you pay attention to the enemy. You see, I also remembered something Pete Buttigieg said a long time ago when he was actually running against Joe Biden for the nomination for president last time. This is a quote from the debate. Pete Buttigieg said this. Nominate me, Pete Buttigieg speaking, and you get to see the President of the United States, states, pardon me, speaking of Donald Trump, stand next to an American war veteran and explain why he, and here comes some slander, why he chose to pretend to be disabled 
when it was his chance to serve. Now, he is, of course, referring to President Trump when he was much younger, getting a doctor to say that he had bone spurs to avoid the draft in Vietnam. Now, this is a huge pile of doo-doo that Buttigieg stepped in here. Now, some might think, well, wait, Florida Maquis, that would be a tough thing for Trump to somehow explain. Wouldn't that make him squirm? No. You see, there is a really big distinction between Pete Buttigieg's military service and what was going on during the Vietnam draft and the people who Buttigieg alleges to represent would side with Trump. You see, the Democrats love to run out this idea of a woman's right to choose, a woman's right to choose. Shouldn't it really be a person's right to choose? You see, back then, there was a draft going on when Trump served. A conscription. The U.S. government was forcibly rounding up young men who didn't want to serve. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Didn't matter. Forcibly rounding up, using a lottery, the young men of America, to put them through boot camp, the absolute minimum possible amount of military training to send them into the meat grinder in Vietnam. 58,000 U.S. military members lost their lives, 153,000 wounded, 766 POWs, allegedly, of which 114 allegedly died in captivity. And there were questions about Mr. Trump having bone spurs, but yet being able to letter in a lot of contact sports. See, allegedly he couldn't march. But during his time when he was in school, when he was not in the military, he, uh, soccer, football, baseball, basketball, wrestling, a lot of contact, a lot of physical sports that he did really, really well in, but allegedly couldn't march because of bone spurs now. All Mr. Trump would have to do is look at Pete Buttigieg and say, Mr. Buttigieg, you talk about a woman's right to choose. What she can or what she should or should not do with her body being her own choice. Mr. Buttigieg, did you sign up voluntarily to serve in the Navy? Of course you did. Of course you did because we have an all-volunteer force now. You were not conscripted. You were not forced against your will by the government to go into a meat grinder in an illegal war in Asia. See, during my time, Mr. Buttigieg, the U.S. government was rounding up people and forcing them into military service, forcing them to pick up a weapon, whether they wanted to or not, not giving them any right to choose and go kill people they had no idea who they were. Mr. Buttigieg, are you saying now that if you were president of the United States at that time or now in the future, that you would be for rounding up the young people of America against their will, forcing them into the absolute minimum amount of military training that you would have to have to go into a meat grinder, I wonder what his youth supporters and Gen Z, the liberals, would say about that. See, right now the U.S. Army is struggling to recruit as most of Gen Z is ineligible to serve due to factors like obesity, drug use, and tattoos. You see, funny story, back then in the lottery, they didn't uh, ask those questions. If you were fat, they made you skinny. If you were a drug user, you stopped. If you had tattoos, eh, oh well, you're going anyway. You're going anyway, because believe me, if all these guys thought they had to do was go get a tattoo, or gain some weight, or smoke some reefer, to get out of the draft, they would have. But they didn't. And a lot of them didn't come home. See, right now, Gen Z's asking some really, for all of the problems that Gen Z has, 
they're smart enough and educated now to be asking some really hard questions of the military about what they should expect. You see, they hear all the benefits. You see, it's kind of one of those dirty little secrets about recruiters. Everybody knows they lie, but now their lies are starting to come with teeth. And these young people are asking questions. So that would be my response to Mr. Buttigieg and his allegation of, I guess you should properly call it, a person's right to choose what they do with their body. Right, ladies? Right, ladies? See, you don't want anybody, some man in government, telling you what you can and can't do with your body. But you have a guy right now who says he's a Democrat, says he's a liberal, says he's on your side, who is quoted as saying that he would like to take Mr. Trump to task for exercising his right to choose to not be forced to do something wildly more immoral than anything you could imagine at the behest of government. Picking up a gun, going to some country, and taking people out that you don't even speak their language. See, this shows a little bit of ignorance and youth. And this is something, I hope this gets to Trump. I hope he hears this video. If he ever is confronted with this question again by somebody who signed up willingly and voluntarily to go be an officer in the military of his own volition. You see, he wasn't rounded up by the government. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> funny story, Mr. Buttigieg. You see, if you had gotten into the military back when Mr. Trump would have been eligible for the draft, and they found out about your, <clears throat> let's see, what, which, what shall we call it, proclivities, you would have gotten out. You see, you wouldn't have even been allowed to serve. You would have been labeled at that time as a mentally ill degenerate and put into a psych ward because you're a gay man at that time. You wouldn't have even been allowed to put on a uniform. So you talk about Trump and his bone spurs, okay, you might have a point. You might have a point, but you would not have even been eligible to serve during the Vietnam era. They would have locked you up. They would have without a key. And that's where you would have stayed for a good long time. And after being dishonored, if you had even tried to go and they found this out about you, you would have been dishonorably discharged immediately. And you'd be carrying that dirty paper that dirty military paper along with you your whole life. Right now, in the military, there are tens of thousands, if not more, trying to get their discharges amended because of the new enlightenment that you got to take advantage of that destroyed so many lives. So you're a bit of a hypocrite actually more than a bit of a hypocrite. Just wanted to leave that there for some folks so that perhaps they can share it with somebody who might find it useful. But once again, I haven't heard a peep from anybody in the military, anybody online, any alternative news sources, mainstream media, none of them having this take. And it's the exact right take. The game is over. It was a slaughter. Both teams played with the same football on the same field. And right now this thing with, with Stephanopoulos that they're going to do for, for Biden, you know what that is? There's supposed to be some interview tonight where Stephanopoulos talks to Biden to try to clean all this up. After getting clobbered 49 to nothing against your number one opponent. Now, Joe Biden is going to go do an inter-squad scrimmage. I played football. Our colors were black and gold. Before we started the season, we had this thing that everybody loved to watch. 
It was called the black and gold game when I was in high school a long time ago. Inter-squad scrimmage. So now Biden is going to go do an inter-squad scrimmage with George Stephanopoulos in front of a home crowd and expect everybody to believe that after getting clobbered in the biggest game of the season, 49 and nothing, that people should go look at the performance in an inner squad scrimmage after that to allay their fears. To me, it's a perfect football analogy. I can find absolutely no flaw in it whatsoever. Can you? Love to hear from you. Also love to have you at the Patreon channel. Once again, dollar a month, that's it, a single dollar. Could sure use the help these days. And those of you who have stepped up, standing in the breach right now, you are keeping both channels going. You're keeping this one going and that one going. God bless all of you. Humbly, thank you so much. Pray for each other. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.